Welcome to Real Life Mentoring, where we explore real life issues to help you make an authentic difference in the world. Hi, we're Chris and Christina, and today we are talking with, I feel like there needs to be a drum roll or something, with our friend, our church member person, our fourth daughter. We've got lots of adopted right. children. She, Leah Gatlin. I'll just put it out there. Yeah, we're talking with Leah. We're happy to have you today, Leah. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about boundaries. Why in the world would we be talking with you about boundaries? Well, that's a really funny <laughs> question to me because if you talk to almost anybody who knew me undergrad or lower, they would also laugh hysterically because I was not good at setting boundaries. I really was a doormat and I wouldn't even tell you what restaurant I wanted to go to. <laughs> well, we're going to get into that and yeah. define those. And I, before we jump into why we're talking about that, mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about your credentials, other than just yes. being our friend. Like, right. You hold some pretty impressive credentials, so just lay it out for us. So, well, first, I am your mentee. So in a podcast talking about mentoring, that feels important. Yeah. I have my bachelor's in international studies, which has nothing to do with the podcast. (laughs) I have my master's in social work, which really has a lot to do with the podcast. I also have my doctorate in social work. I work at a local church and I do really my job is to bridge the outside community with the inside community Mm -hmm. and anything else that needs a social worker. Yeah. And so we joked, but the views expressed today are those exclusively of Dr. <laughs> Leah Gatlin and no organization that she's yes. affiliated with. <laughs> Correct. Well, we were recently all at a mutual friend's wedding and somebody talked to you about a family issue mm-hmm. and the, the topic of boundaries came mm-hmm. up. And I said, Leah, we should do a podcast on that. So in a textbook world. Tell us a definition of what boundaries are. So I'm borrowing some of this language from the book Boundaries by Cloudon Townsend because... Excellent. What a clever title. Yeah. Right? <laughs> because it was so life-changing for me. Yes. And so, Can you give the author's name again? Yes. So Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. I don't remember his first name, Townsend. Mm-hmm. Also, if you like audiobooks, it's actually a really good one to listen to. Yeah. But they talk about how boundaries are the same as like a fence on your property line. You are responsible for what happens inside your fence and you're not responsible for what happens outside of your fence. Mm -hmm. And both personally and professionally, that's been really helpful for me to think about. You know, obviously we have gates, right? So like I have a gate on my fence. I've let you in. Mm -hmm. I'm still not responsible for you, Mm -hmm. but I am the gatekeeper for when it's time for you to leave. Yeah, that's good. We came across this book. Do you remember when we first? Yeah, tell no, that story. Probably twenty years ago, mm-hmm. I was a leader, and in in this church, I was the pastor, and it was a new church, and there was a woman in the church who was, I would say, eating my lunch, driving mm-hmm. me crazy, and I realized my wife and I both did that she was abusing us in some ways. Mm-hmm. But I thought, how do I deal with this? So uh, we had met with this counselor before, and I went to her, and I said, I want to talk to you about this. How do I deal with this lady? And she had me explain, and I explained the situation. She goes, I may know that particular lady, but I know the situation because I've dealt with this over the years. She goes, we're not going to talk about that lady or your situation. We're talking about your problem, Chris. Which was lack of boundaries. Lack of boundaries. I I remember thinking, what? What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. She picked up the book off of her desk and said, go purchase this copy or this, this book, Boundaries, and then come back to me after you've read it. It, it really changed my, my perspective on relationships. Right. So let's start at the beginning, Leah. I pick up the book, and from my personal experience, I started reading the book, and I was scared half to death going, oh, shoot, how do I implement these? And then I was also like, are you kidding me? I can do this? <laughs> so how do they work? How, how do you establish boundaries? Right. So the first thing I want to say is you might be like me and somebody said they were setting a quote unquote boundary as an excuse to be a jerk. Mm. So I was actually really hesitant to the word boundaries because I'd only ever express, I'd only ever 
but on the receiving end of people expressing them in almost cruel ways. Okay. Like, um, like what? Like give an example. Yeah. So I had a roommate in college. Actually, I had two. I had two roommates post-college. Roommate one came home one day, and I don't remember the specifics, but she had had a, objectively speaking, really terrible day. Mm-hmm. Roommate two was at home. I don't remember what she was doing, but it was nothing of life and death importance or anything like that. So roommate one just naturally starts unloading on roommate two about, I've had such a hard day, you know, and roommate two later in telling me this story said, and she didn't even ask if I like had the time or the capacity to listen. And so, but rather than saying, hey, roommate one, what you're saying is important. And I want to give you the time to listen. And Mm -hmm. I can't listen right now. Mm -hmm. She just sort of I think just basically told her to shut up and get over it. Okay. And so I'm like, and that's not a boundary. That's just being, being rude. rude. <laughs> there was a place where she could have set a boundary. Sure. And so what's interesting to me too is I think all of us have boundaries. Mm-hmm. We just don't label them as boundaries. Mm-hmm. So for example, I have like a texting app on my phone that's for work. Mm-hmm. And I had called somebody. I try very hard not to call people related to work. Yeah. On this phone. But anyway, so, and somebody called me and it was 5.30. My boundary is I don't answer my work phone after 5.30 yeah. unless it's somebody who I know, man, if they're calling me at 5.30, they really need something. But I don't even think of that as a boundary until, you know, yeah. I was doing this podcast. Yeah. So what happens? Somebody mm-hmm. calls you at 6.30. Mm-hmm. How do you assert that boundary? Right. She, do, well, she doesn't answer the phone. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. the phone is the easiest one because mm-hmm. contrary to what most teenagers think, <laughs> your phone does not have to be answered. Mm. That's a whole other podcast. Right. Yeah. Now, if like, so in my family, we have a rule. If we need to know something urgently, it doesn't have to be an emergency. Mm-hmm. You call twice, which means I really do need to speak to you urgently. But so if somebody calls me two or three times and I will call them and I'll say, this needs to be an emergency. Yeah. And if this is an emergency, one, please don't call me this late. Two, right. don't call me this many times in a row. Well, let's talk about why do we need boundaries? So... Boundaries, you know, right now, soul care is like the hot topic, is mm-hmm. the hot word. And I think boundaries are one of the first steps of still soul care. Mm-hmm. It's how we don't, especially for introverts, how I don't hate my friends. Mm-hmm. I don't hate my family. Yeah. You know, and it's how I keep myself healthy. And I actually, I've seen other people's lives benefit from me using boundaries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not just for, me, for us. Could you give an example of that? I didn't think about that, how it benefits other people. Yeah. So in my job, I deal with a lot of people in really desperate situations. Mm -hmm. And some of them have nobody's ever expressed a boundary or some Mm -hmm. of them, they get so upset and so emotional that people kind of get afraid of them. And so if they start getting upset with me on the phone, you know, let's pretend it's Christina. I'll say, hey, Christina, I understand you're upset right now. You can either calm down and I can keep talking to you or you can keep acting like this and I'm going to hang up, but I'm not going to answer when you call back. Yeah. And I've noticed though, like I have, we have one person in particular. Now she can tell when I'm getting ready to set a boundary and she actually will calm down before that. So, so that's really beneficial for her. She's, right. Yeah. yeah because yeah. people are more willing to talk to her. It's going to help her in a job situation. But it's fair to say initially you give someone a boundary. It doesn't feel like they're not going to think it's helping them. No. Right. And a lot of times, so I like my two helpful tips, if you will. First tip is acknowledge the emotion. I learned that in my MSW because if I am trying to use logic while you're still in your feelings, you actually can't access your logic yet. But when I even just say, oh, Christina, you look really upset, or I can understand how that's really difficult for you then it takes you down several notches yeah. and then I can give you a boundary but I always try to make my boundary a choice you That's don't have good. to like the choices mm-hmm. but I try to give you a choice yeah. so if you do the or if this you know so if you do this this will happen if you do this this will happen reminds me of parenting with love and logic right <laughs> yeah, when I had a three-year-old you know yeah. and I also my my mom gets so maybe frustrated is the wrong word but she sees these young parents complaining about how they can't they'll have like a three or four year old and they're like I can't even go to the bathroom by myself right and my mom who is the sweetest kindest (laughs) woman who does is not a super boundary person but she'll say that's your own fault yeah because I remember as a kid you did not bother mom in the bathroom Mm -hmm. 
unless somebody was bleeding or the house was on fire. So <clears throat> when I first read that book, I was in, my mom was alive and there was a lot of mm. unhealthy things mm-hmm. that if she had an emotional breakdown, it was then my issue to mm. fix mm-hmm. it, come to the rescue, get involved in the situation. I was not ever asked. It was just expected. So it was a little bit difficult for me to start implementing those boundaries. So what do right. you say to somebody? What what would you have said to me 30 some odd years ago? Okay, I realize I need some boundaries with my mom. How mm-hmm. do I start implementing those? So first, I think is most helpful to figure out what is the problem? Like, or where's the pain? Okay. Two, where do you want to go? So maybe in that case, it's I don't actually want to listen. I don't want to be responsible for my mom's feelings. Mm -hmm. And then three, I find scripts really helpful. Mm. So if you know your mom calls you every day at five o'clock when your kids are losing their mind and she wants to talk for two hours about her latest trauma, then I say, figure out what you're going to say to her or don't answer the phone Mm -hmm. or because the problem is when you're in the moment, especially when you're a natural helper, you don't know what to say and you don't know what to do. And it's really hard. It was hard for me too because the reason part of the time that we're trying to solve like our family members or friends problems is because we actually want to get back to peace and the quickest way back to peace is for them to get themselves under control right so yeah yeah so I would say figure out where you want to go Mm -hmm. the next thing too I I just read this at lunch is modulate your own feelings okay so does that mean (laughs) like or regulate your so Uh if I Uh am really mad or really frustrated or really anything except happy Mm -hmm. it's not a good time to set a boundary oh gotcha it's sort of like how you tell parents don't discipline out of anger right okay so if i'm stressed out i need to take some deep breaths then moving forward again it's acknowledge the emotion or realizing saying hey mom i know this is different from how we've been in the past Mm -hmm. but i need to make a change and here here's what that change is so I can no longer talk to you for two hours at five o'clock every day. What I can do is talk to you for 30 minutes if you want to call me at three when the girls are taking naps. Because you, right. you, you have to figure out what you can live with. And I find, too, I've done this before where if I know something is coming up that's mm-hmm. going to trigger some, right. I don't like that word, but it's going to cause some boundary right. crossing, I give the person some warning. And I say, hey, I know previously in situations like this, it has been X. Yeah. But in this situation, my rules are yeah. Y. Mm-hmm. Because then also it gives them time to get mad at you and frustrated and to clarify the boundary before the event happens. Yeah, that's good. I love the idea of having a script that was mm-hmm. super helpful for me. And then I'm thinking of that listener who would have been like me 30 some odd years mm-hmm. ago going, am I allowed to do that? What's your answer yeah. to that? <laughs> well, I go back to I'm responsible for me. Yeah. Once I realized I literally cannot control other people, it is impossible. It was actually both terrifying and freeing yeah you know and when I realized you know in your case if my mom has an emotional meltdown it's not my fault yeah I am not responsible for fixing it for her yeah a couple years ago I was praying and somebody was upset at me and I thought I don't think I did anything wrong here but they're very upset yeah And I just felt like Holy Spirit said to me, just because that person is upset doesn't mean you did anything wrong. Right. But also that person gets to be upset because those are their feelings and it doesn't matter if they're related or not. Right. We have said before that we are unashamedly, um, we approach things through a biblical worldview. And I think when I could wrap my head around, Jesus set some boundaries. (laughs) Uh, yes god as creator sets boundaries Mm -hmm. i could get behind that like it just felt i had a warped sense of my own what it meant to be a christian like (gasps) i can take up for myself which is really a very healthy yeah it goes along with what you're saying and especially for women who grew up in the south and evangelical type circles where submission which is biblical becomes I have to help everybody and do everything right. and sacrifice myself, which is kind of the problem with those I am third awards too, yes. <laughs> of Jesus, others, yourself, right. because, you know, the Bible says to love your neighbor as, as yourself. yourself. So if I don't love myself, I can't love my neighbor. Mm-hmm. Well, that's yeah. a good point. I want to, I want to interject something. So question, why would you say people, some people have difficulty setting boundaries? Maybe the better question is why don't they think they deserve to have boundaries. 
Yeah. Well, and I think sometimes that goes back to your family of origin, Mm -hmm. because I imagine if you went back and looked like, I'm just going to keep using you and your mom as an example, (laughs) you would realize that somehow she had communicated an expectation that that's what you were going to do. Yeah. Whether it's she was inappropriately sharing with you because... When you're four or five, you shouldn't know what's going on with your parents to that Mm -hmm. degree. But if they're sharing it with you and you happen to make them feel better one time, then it becomes like maybe your mom thinks she is incapable. Yeah. And so it's really hard when you grow up a certain way or or people, especially if people applaud you. Oh, Christina, you're so easy to get along with. Mm. Oh, Christina, you're so thoughtful. Mm -hmm. You want to keep doing that. So that way that could be a sign of a person without boundaries. Yeah. Not necessarily, but it could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially if when we talk about boundaries, immediately you think it's cruel. I would ask what boundaries were set with you. And maybe there weren't any. Leah, maybe this Mm -hmm. is another episode on boundaries, but there are a lot of children, teenagers and young adults living in homes with parents who do not allow them to have boundaries. Right. And uh, any thoughts on that? Because I wasn't allowed. We didn't know. I didn't know it existed. And if I thought about it long enough, then I felt shame for trying to have a boundary with my parents. Mm -hmm. So you feel like you're stuck sometimes. Right. And I'm not naive enough to think that a good, honest, healthy conversation works in every family. Right. I mean, I didn't mention this before, but I was a therapist for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So I would say then, what can I control? And I can control my reaction. And so... If my parents aren't allowing me to have any boundaries with them, which for the record is super unhealthy. Yeah. So in in case any (laughs) parents are listening who have no boundaries, Mm -hmm. super unhealthy. It does not help your kids. First of all, I always say try talking to them about it and explaining your point of view in a calm, reasonable manner and saying, is there a way that we could compromise on this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe you need to know where I'm going for the evening. And if my plans change, I need to check in with you. But I don't need to call you every 15 minutes. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I grew up in a very dysfunctional home. And Mm -hmm. had I understood boundaries, it would not have been allowed. And so as an adult, as I have reflected over my relationship with my parents, Mm -hmm. boundaries would not have been allowed. It would have been worse for me. And so it gives me compassion for children and teenagers living in homes like that. And I go, how do do you help somebody in a home with parents who not only don't understand boundaries themselves? Right but they will not allow others to have it in their lives. And you're stuck in some ways. Well, and I think, again, self-regulating of, you know what? I don't have to get upset every time this happens. Because... I can't control them, but I can control yeah. how I respond. Exactly. Yeah. I was thinking about, for somebody who's listening, speak to, I love boundaries now. And I don't have mm-hmm. a problem telling people what my boundaries are. It Not like, well, I'm not mm-hmm. doing that. That's my boundary. But back 30 some odd years ago, I always would be a little, uh, it would feel a little Mm -hmm. awkward. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel awkward anymore sometimes, but like if I'm thinking back to, to probably the the wildest extremes when we took care of your mom (laughs) and she had all (laughs) these demands, it was very easy for me to go, oh, I'm so sorry. I can't do that now. I'd be happy to do that, you know, tomorrow, but I can't do that now. I will say though, even as a a grown man, I, I gave her, my mom, strong boundaries but it was, at times, internally, it was difficult. Right, yeah. I still right. struggled. Like, am I not being kind? Actually, I was. Right. But her reactions, not responses, but reactions, mm-hmm. made it feel like I was being unkind. Well, I was going to ask you, what if others don't respect them? But you've talked yeah. about that. You can't control others, but you can control right. how you respond. Right. Yeah. And I always, I try to always label what's going to happen if you violate this boundary. Even if I'm setting... Occasionally I don't. So if I just say, hey, I'd prefer you not call me after five or whatever. Eventually they'll get the clue when I don't answer the phone, I hope. (laughs) Um, I also tell people, I'm like, there's this function on your phone where you can block people. Mm -hmm. So if they're violating your boundary, you know, so it can be really hard. And I still find myself falling back into old patterns Mm -hmm. with people. And sometimes it's, you know, family and friends we had in high school, which we can tend to revert. But if that happens, I will stop and say, okay, well, I've already committed to this and I'm a person of my word, Mm -hmm. so I'm going to do it. But let's remember next time when somebody requests something, 
I need to wait 30 minutes because I'm a chronic people pleaser. That's good. Yeah. So know thyself. <laughs> to leave thyself. Right. And set up those safety things. But I think too about like a budget is a boundary mm. and it feels awful yeah. the first time you do it or you start tracking your spending. But eventually you realize that those boundaries actually free up your spending. Right. Okay, Leah, you, you said people pleasing. Do you think uh-huh. it's possible to have healthy boundaries and be a people pleaser? So, it seems contradictory. I'm going to say something maybe very controversial. You might have to edit it this <laughs> okay. out of the podcast. But I don't think people pleasing as we know it is a desirable or healthy quality. Oh, I agree. Now, and I think boundaries is how you stop being such a people pleaser. That and the first time somebody gets mad at you and you realize the sky didn't fall you know I probably didn't lose my job or my income it's so I wouldn't recommend starting boundaries with your boss or somebody who affects Mm -hmm. you know your income living situation (laughs) no I appreciate we like I appreciate that that common sense instruction though right yeah start with your closest friends because hopefully they're the ones you chose them they chose you it's Mm -hmm. not like family where you're born into it and I don't let let me clarify I agree with you Mm -hmm. I don't see where people pleasing is healthy right yeah at all i really don't being a kind and helpful person doesn't mean that you're a doormat right or people because i think of people pleasers as doormats Mm -hmm. also most people pleasers i know are actually trying to get external validation Mm. and that's why they will do anything for anybody because they need that external validation they don't have enough self-worth or a place for that to come from or any personal boundaries right (laughs) well and i have compassion for that because Mm -hmm. i don't come across as a people pleaser Mm -hmm. and i'm not as a whole but i Mm -hmm. i can tell in certain situations where i've crossed that line and I go, why am I doing that mm-hmm. or saying that or letting that happen? Mm-hmm. Right. I'm too concerned in pleasing that person. Right. Fortunately, I'm healthy enough at this point in my life. I step out of that. Right. Pretty quickly. Well, and sometimes, too, it can look like respect. I think of an old boss I had who I would stay late. He could ask me to do pretty much anything, and mm-hmm. I would say yes. Mm-hmm. Because, one, I really liked him. And, two... I wanted his respect. And it felt like if I do what he wants, I'll have his respect. Mm -hmm. Turns out that boss actually really responded to when I would say, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Boy, there's a lot to chew on in all of that. The first recommendation, I get the boundaries book by Townsend and Cloud. Cloud. Yeah. And and Dr. Henry Cloud has a great Instagram. Mm -hmm. If you're on social media, if you just look for Instagram at Dr. Henry Cloud, and he shares some things there. Yes, and he, he has some great videos on YouTube as well. Yeah, and I think there's boundaries for couples, boundaries for yes. kids, teenagers. It's right. so, 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 so helpful. Right. Yeah, anything else to kind of wrap this up? No, I would. I think I would just say we all need boundaries, mm. and you actually need boundaries for every person you know. So even like with you and Chris, there oh, are there's some boundaries. boundaries. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. No, it's yeah. very healthy in, in a marriage. If you yeah. don't have right. boundaries... Even if just one person has boundaries, yeah, it, right, it gets complicated. Right, and it, I think it's really good, even if you have young children, to have boundaries, so then that they learn it's healthy. Because in child development, you know, when kids are saying "mine, mine, 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 mine," right. it's because they actually think that item is an extension of themselves. Mm. And I think about that so often with people of like, if I think of like, if you thought your mom was an extension of mm-hmm. yourself. So anyway, I would yeah. say have them with everybody. Yeah, have them with yourself too. That's good. Yeah. And if it helps you, write them down. Write down some scripts for mm-hmm. what. Am I going to do? I think that's um, such a good practical yeah. tool. Yeah. And again, my secret weapon is always acknowledge the emotion mm-hmm. because I don't care how amped up somebody is. I mean, I've literally had people here who are on drugs and alcohol mm-hmm. amped up mm-hmm. and I'll say, oh, you look really upset mm-hmm. and they calm down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's good. Yes. Great. We're going to finish this today on boundaries. Get the mm-hmm. book, get the podcast, look at the Instagram from Cloud, Henry Cloud, Jim Townsend. Get the book. And Leah, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. We want to thank you as always for listening. If today was helpful, if something that you listened to was helpful, we would really love it if you would go to Apple or Spotify, leave us a review, download, subscribe, and for all things related to podcast. If you'd like to give a financial contribution to help us continuing bringing this sort of broadcasting to you, just go to FahrenheitMentoring.org. Hi, this is Chris Corral, producer of the Fahrenheit Real Life Mentoring Podcast. This podcast is produced through a partnership with the Confetti Corral Boutique and Michelle Corral Realtor. 
To find out more about these businesses who support our vision and ministry, go to confetticorral.com or find them on Facebook.